James Thompson's most acclaimed work during his lifetime was a series of poems called The Seasons, four separate poems, each dedicated to one of the seasons. Summer was completed in 1727 after establishing himself in London, having moved down from his native Scotland. Summer, like all the seasons, is an epic poem, so we can only read a couple of extracts to give you a sense of the style of Thompson's writing from nearly 300 years ago. Apologies to some of you here who've heard the first extract already at the inauguration of Thompson's new memorial at Poets' Corner. From brightening fields of ether fair disclosed, child of the sun, refulgent summer comes in pride of youth and felt through nature's depth. He comes attended by the sultry hours and ever fanning breezes on his way. While from his ardent look the turning spring averts her blushful face and earth and skies all smiling to his hot dominion leaves. Hence let me haste into the midwood shade where scarce a sunbeam wanders through the gloom, and on the dark green grass beside the brink of haunted stream that by the roots of oak rolls o'er the rocky channel, lie at large and sing the glories of the circling year. Come, inspiration, from thy hermit seat by mortal seldom found, May fancy dare from thy fixed serious face and raptured glance shot on surrounding heaven to steal one look, creative of the poet, every power exalting to an ecstasy of soul. I tell you what, am I allowed to say this? I think you should give us all a clap at the end, and we should just do it. Otherwise, you'll get exhausted by clapping. <laughs> Very nice though it was, thank you. <laughs> this second extract relates to Richmond and other areas nearby. For local historians, there's a lot to, lot to look out for here. Thompson specifically mentioned Sheen, widely accepted in an early 18th century as being Richmond. And Harrington is William, Earl of Harrington, who rebuilt Petersham Lodge. Say, shall we wind along the streams, or walk the smiling mead, or court the forest glades, or wander wild among the waving harvests, or ascend while radiant summer opens all its pride, thy hill, delightful sheen. Here let us sweep the boundless landscape, now the raptured eye exalting swift to huge Augusta scent, now to the sister hills that skirt her plain, to lofty Harrow now, and now to where majestic Windsor lifts his princely brow. In lovely contrast to this glorious view, calmly magnificent, then will we turn to where the silver Thames first rural grows. There let the feasted eye unwearied stray. Luxurious there, rove through the pendant woods that nodding hang o'er Harrington's retreat, and stooping thence to Ham's embowering walks, beneath whose shades in spotless peace retired with her, the pleasing partner of his heart, the worthy Queensbury yet laments his gay. And polished Cornbury woos the willing muse. Slow, let us trace the matchless vale of Thames. Fair winding up to where the muses haunt in Twitnam's bowers, and for their pope implore the healing god to royal Hampton's pile to Claremont's terraced height and Isha's groves, where in the sweetest solitude, embraced by the soft windings of the silent mole, from courts and senates, Pelham finds repose. 
enchanting veil. Beyond whate'er the muse has of Accio or Hesperia sung, O veil of bliss, O softly swelling hills, on which the power of cultivation lies and joys to see the wonders of his toil. 